but he grant the grace and the power to change us so how am I going to be continually cleansed and walking in holiness as I continue to follow the light of his word God is light and in him there is no darkness at all cast all your upon the Lord cast all your cares upon the Those who want to have fellowship with God, with Christ, and his, God and His Son, must live in the light. Are you hearing me? Jesus also taught this, John and, 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 and St. John 1, that's where I was trying to go earlier, verses 4 through 9. And so he says, um, in him was a life, and the life was the light of men. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. All right, and then he mentions, if you look briefly in chapter 3, uh, in verses 19 through 21, he says, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come they to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Are you hear me? But he that doeth truth, somebody say truth, cometh where? To the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are in God. Sometimes if people don't want to hang around you, they don't feel comfortable if you're trying to live right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's nothing you've done. It's just that they don't feel comfortable because they're not walking in the light. Because light exposes, right? And so it could be something about your life that makes a person feel guilty. You're not doing anything. You're not trying to do anything. But you're just simply trying to live and walk in the light. That makes sense, y'all? So understand that. Let's not be frustrated with others. But let's just understand that sometimes men love darkness rather than light. Because they don't want to give up their evil deeds. All right. So we're clear on that. So let's go on. So, um, so he mentioned that. Now go on a little further. John 8. 8. Jesus talked about the light. The Bible says God is light. And in him there's no darkness at all. There's no there's no variableness, no eclipse, no no shadow of something dimming the light. He, he's light. Verse 12, chapter 8. Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in. But you have the light of life. And then a little further, chapter 9, verse 5, he says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. All right. Last scripture here on this particular thing, chapter 12 in John. Jesus. So he had a lot to say about the light. 
Verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believes on me should not abide or continue in darkness. Everybody with me still? So now, John was saying, now if we claim to have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, we're lying. You may run into people that walk in darkness and yet they say, you can't judge me. Because they don't want to hear the truth. Their deeds are evil. So they throw up the shield of, it's by grace we're saved through faith. But we don't want to misuse this thing about grace, do we? Because the grace of God that brings salvation is a teacher. It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we may live righteous and soberly in this present world. So we want to be clear about what God teaches. Uh, grace is the foundation and the framework for salvation, and it is constantly given to those who receive from God. And that's how we're saved. That's how we're constantly delivered by the power and grace of God. But the grace is given that we might be sanctified and purified. Are you with me? Because remember we are I want to become as he is. The believer must live a life of holiness and of transparency and openness toward God. Are you with me? Basically, in essence, that's essentially what John was saying. So the first claim, look at verse 6 here. Now we're going to, uh, further on to verse 6. Verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. The first claim, a man who claims to fellowship, have fellowship with God, yet habitually walks in darkness, hidden from the light of God, is, is lying, right? Such a claim is absurd because the two claims are incompatible. Such a contradiction, a victory combination of words and deeds reveal a deep-seated problem of falsehood or lying. If I tell you I am righteous or have fellowship with light, which exposes darkness, and I continue to walk in sin, or evil deeds. Somewhere. I'm not getting into that light. So that it can reveal to me. Where I am. Are oh, you hear me? Because once I get into the light. He's going to show me. Where I'm going wrong. What I need to change. Are you with me? So if I remain in sin year after year, I'm not looking and in the presence of this light. Because I'm still, lighten up now, still doing the same thing year after year. I'm not coming to the light. And so I'm actually hiding from the light. I don't want my deeds to be manifested. So there were those there and the Gnostics pointing out that says, I got fellowship with God. But they were truly hating one another. 
They had no good works. There were there was an exclusive club of so-called elite Gnostics. They claim that Jesus was really not God. He was a man, and so when uh, during the when he come up out of the water and the Holy Ghost came on him, then that was the spirit of of, of God. And he was God then, and so uh, the whole while he was on earth, he was God. But after his mission, then the spirit was taken from him, and he was that man. So the Gnostics had a, a whole lot of falsehood that they were teaching. But the, the, the young church believers were concerned because the Gnostics made it appealing to their intellect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And any ministry that appeals to your intellect, you have to watch it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is spirit. Somebody say, he's spirit. And he's life. Hallelujah. Intellect will never change a man, but, 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 but the power of God will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, stay calm now. You need to finish what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Now let's move on to verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So if we walk in the light as he's in the light, two things will happen. We have fellowship with each other. Are you hearing me? We have fellowship with each other and also we experience a continual cleansing. Anybody with me? Now look, we're not perfect here. It only takes God a minute to show you if you feel like you are. <laughs> so what I'm saying is this, is that, but when we acknowledge and walk in the light, there is a constant cleansing by the Holy Spirit. Because not only does he reveal to us where we need the change, but he grant the grace and the power to change us. Are you with me? So how am I going to be continually cleansed and walking in holiness as I continue to follow the light of his word? God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If I tell you and I'm doing wrong and lying with other women and nobody see it, nobody know it, thank God this church is not like that because we got some seers in this place. <laughs> <laughs> but in some churches it happened, people are carrying on and doing things and thinking that nobody knows. And all of a sudden, God lets us know, no, I've been watching all along. But when you walk in the light, keep gazing at the light. Keep gazing in this word. Keep looking in truth. It'll reveal to us. Because he said, if you continue in my word, then, what do you mean then? I mean, you, wait a minute now, Jesus. Why do you say then? He said, I'm come a light into the world. If you follow me, you're not going to go wrong. You're not going to walk in darkness. Because my light will expose and as you confess, I'll cleanse. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Gazing at the truth, gazing at the light. That's what he's saying, because there were those claim, making false claims. And it was bringing confusion to this young church. If we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. I said earlier, don't, don't worry about people that don't want a fellowship with the church. They, you know, they, they, there's something that God needs to correct in them. Isn't that right? Because that's not Bible. Isn't that right? 
All right. All right. Now, genuine intimacy with God is the only possible basis for deep fellowship with one another. Genuine intimacy with God is the only ba- possible basis for deep fellowship with one another. What are you saying? When my relationship is right with God, I can have a right relationship with people. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Uh, am, am, I, am I in the Word? I, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm in the Word now. This is what he's saying. Man shall not live by bread alone. By what? See, it's the word of God we live by. We don't live by our emotions. We don't live by certain revelations that contradict the word. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? We live by the truth of the word. All right. So now we look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. There's that group. And the truth is not in us. Some of these Gnostics, boy, when the gospel was preached, they, they wouldn't receive it. I ain't got no sin. And then, so verse 8, that second group of people claiming to have no sin, basically declaring that sin is not a part of their lives or their human nature. But the Bible makes it clear, all have and come short of the glory of God. And it was because of sin that brought Jesus to Calvary. Are you hear what I'm saying? So we can't deny that claim, right? We were born, David said we were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. All right. So we know that's a false claim, right? Self-deception, that's what he's saying. They'd be de- deceived because they say they don't have sin. Or deluding ourselves and the truth is not in our hearts. Look at somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I'm not that, that. Verse 9 said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Rather than denying sin, believers are asked to acknowledge it freely. When we admit our sins, we find that God will cleanse and remove us, remove that sin from us. He cleanses from all unrighteousness, not only uh, imputing righteousness to the sinner's account, but uh, uh, by gradually producing holy character in the life. So God is a perfecter and a developer. He, he begins to develop and perfect the areas where we need to be perfected as we continue to gaze, look at the light, and walk in the light, the knowledge of truth that we know until he reveals more and we walk in that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So then as we do that, then God continually cleanses. How many times have you been in the presence of God and God began to unfold to you area that he wants you to let him deal with? That's very normal. Are you with me? That's very normal because we live in a polluted world and we were born in fashion in sin. A lot of times our concepts are wrong and needs to be changed. But as we continue in the Lord, in his word, God, by his precious Holy Spirit, heals and delivers. Now, I'm, I'm putting a plug in for healing and deliverance, too, now. I guess you heard it by now, right? Amen. All right. So, um, verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Now, notice this. And his word, what? Say, so, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, John. What are you talking about? Let's read that again. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Now look at this. His word, when it's in us, brings about a certain revelation as to our sinfulness. Uh, yo, 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 you ain't hear what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, okay, I'll back up now. Another group denies that they have never committed a single act of sin. Of course, I thank God. Look at my said, thank God that's not me. We make him a liar, challenges, challenging his truthfulness. He say we are sinners. We're saved by the grace of God. 
It proves or shows the absence of the word of God in our lives. In other words, that's what the writer was pointing out here. If a person makes such false claims, then it shows that God's word is really not in him. To help us avoid sinning or a continual, on a continual basis. So uh, John says, verse 1 in chapter 2, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So the first claim or the first uh, reason that God wrote was that we, they would, we would have fellowship uh, that our joy would be full. And the second part, what I just read, chapter 2, verse 1, is that we would have victory over sin. That we would walk in victory over the sin, right? There's going to come sinful challenges. We have an old sin nature that we have to continue to die, keep it flesh under, right? Crucify it so that we can walk with God. And, uh, but he's, he's actually wanting them to be able to walk in victory over the, that sinful nature. Are you still out there? Yeah. Amen. Okay. So then, um, keeping it real. The Lord says, you want to heal. You can't help but think, well, Lord, what, what is the problem? If you want to heal and people want to be healed, what is the problem? Have you ever thought about that? People want to be healed. God want to heal. What God said to me when I was in prayer, he said he paid, he said he paid a dear price for that heart to be healed. He said he paid a dear price for that heart to be healed and freed up. So the Lord wants to free our hearts. And he wants to heal our hearts. It's quiet in here. He wants to heal our hearts and deliver us. And he pointed out to me that people are suffering afflictions. People are suffering affliction. This is a time where there's so many afflictions. Even the church of God, there's, people are going through being challenged. And then he said this to me. I want you to hear this clearly. He said, get these people moving. Are you hearing me? He said, get these people moving. So I'm thinking, what? What? And then he said this. He says, they didn't understand what you were doing. Sometimes when God moves upon us, people may look at a person and think that they're moving in the natural and so they conclude certain things not understanding that God wants people mobilized healed and delivered so he shakes us up a little bit so that we will listen more carefully and then take earnest heed to what he's saying And so, somebody wants to heal today. He wants to free you up today. Then, God mentioned that there are stages in judgment. It may start out with just afflictions. And then he pointed out that it may move from afflictions to person moving into bondage then it may move to physical contact on persons a person's physical body or their lives maybe some form of chronic sickness or sickness that that will not 
or could take them to death. And then he said the very last is death. It's serious. It's serious. I'm only giving what the Lord spoke to me in prayer. This is the other thing that the Lord said. He said repentance toward God. So our whole church, he wants us to repent. Now, this does not mean that every person is doing all of these things that's mentioned or not doing. It doesn't mean that. But I was, as I was coming on, and my wife, we were talking, just talking. How many of you have read in the Bible, remember when uh, Joshua was leading the people in conquest to fighting against the nations? There was Achan that had sinned in the camp. And he desired the accursed thing which the Lord had, had clearly warned Israel not to do. Anybody remember that? Now, when Achan took this accursed thing because he lusted after it, took it back into his house and hid it and his stuff. Now, eventually God dealt with him alone, okay? But beforehand, when the nation, the army of the nation of Israel went out to war, I want you to get this now. The army was defeated. Are you hearing me? The army didn't sin as per se, right? But Achan sins. So what are you saying? I feel like God wants us to look at things on a holistic basis. He doesn't want us to exclude ourselves. Well, I'm not doing that. So, you know. Are you hearing me? God didn't see it as Well, Achan sinned, so let me just deal with him alone. They went out to war, and the fear was upon the whole army. No, I know you didn't hear that. The fear was on the whole army. Because Achan sinned. And the power of God did not return until Achan had been properly dealt with. Hello, somebody. I saw your